Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, this video is going to be a follow-up to the last video I made titled Propitiation and Eternal Torment are Mutually Exclusive and Clearly Oxymoron. Now, some of you may have uh, noticed that uh, since I made that video, uh, I've been absent. Uh, so I, I've been in the hospital and now I'm out and I have a window of opportunity to uh, do this follow-up video and uh, expect to be going back in the hospital soon. So I want to take advantage of this uh, window of opportunity. So if you have not seen the video uh, that I'm referring to, uh, please go back and watch that video. Now, what I really want to do is respond to the attitude of people uh, who have watched the video. So, um, the, the nice thing about it is the video has, uh, up to today, it has about, it has 217 views, and there are seven thumbs up and no thumbs down, surprisingly. So, I was actually quite surprised about that because the subject is uh, controversial. Uh, in the past, uh, when I talked about this subject, sometimes people can't even entertain the conversation because it, it, it's such an emotional subject to some people. And that is that, uh, will the lost suffer eternal torment in hell or will they uh, be consumed in hell and completely perish and no longer exist. I hold the latter position and I have a playlist titled What is the State of the Dead that uh, I've spent uh, a bunch of hours uh, on that series uh, to prove the point from the Bible. Uh, but let me let me use this opportunity to talk about the way people think. Here, here's an example of bad thinking. This was a comment on this video. Uh, Roger Walter said, the punishment of the wicked unbelieving is as eternal as the eternal life of the redeemed. The Bible is clear in many places that hell is real, conscious torment, and that is eternal. Revelation says, quote, and the devil was cast into the lake of fire where the beast and false prophet are, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't copy the entire, it says read more, so there must be more to this comment. But that's, that's enough. You get, you get the point. Um, here, here's my reply to um, Roger Walter. Um, I said, I always find it to be very revealing when someone ignores the message in my video and 100% changes the subject. What about the point that propitiation and eternal torment are mutually exclusive? They cannot coexist. Will you concede that? Or will you ignore that? That was the point of the video. Now, regarding your point, no, it is not, quote, clear in many places, unquote, on eternal conscious torment. There are a couple of verses that you can use to support this evil, sadistic, false God, but that is not the God of the Bible. However, there really are many verses that support and explicitly state that the lost will perish or destroyed and die. In fact, there are at least a hundred verses against your views. Will you study the other side of this argument? Or will you remain ignorant of the many wonderful proofs against eternal torment of the lost? Um, I think this, this, the way that um, this person um, approached the, this video uh, was uh, an example 
of a video I made a few weeks ago uh, talking about, uh, it was titled, um, I do not respect you. And there's a picture of me with my hands over my ears because it's people who they want to present their position, but they got their hands over their ears and they're not willing to listen. They'll do all the talking, but they're not willing to listen. They're not willing to actually listen to and consider the opposing point of view. They'll jump to conclusions and give an answer without even studying it out. Now, uh, I was very happy that if you go to the video uh, and, and look at the comments, you, I think you will actually be surprised. Um, there are quite a few people who uh, made comments on the video supporting the position that the, the lost do not suffer eternal torment. Instead, they, they perish. Uh, some of the YouTubers that you know and love agree with me on this. And they've been willing to publicly state that. And But if you agree, I'm glad you uh, realize that. If you disagree, I hope you will not have the attitude of this person where they ignore the entire point of the video and just change the subject to show me, try, try to show me a verse that is obviously only a couple of verses on their side and that they, these verses are addressed in my series. But you'll have to go to the series and watch it in order to see the answers to, to that verse. But I was happy to see that some people who believe in eternal torment of the lost, as, as I did for 20, 25 years, some of these people watched the video and they, they demonstrated what I would call good thinking instead of bad thinking. And that was, well, here's, an, here's one example. This is a YouTuber abiding in Jesus. This saint says, God bless you, Brother Luke. I will have to admit you have thrown me and my son for a loop with this one. However, before we just start trying to compile a case against this teaching in our minds, I am going to go and watch your playlist, What is the State of the Dead? And I will also check out the channel that you instructed us to check out. God bless you. You really got our brains tingling today with this one. And my answer to her was, Wow, sister, you are in for many more amazing proofs that will surprise you. I look forward to your continued thoughts and comments on this. Um, so here's a person who is thinking correctly, and that is that, uh, okay, uh, you've stimulated my thought with your video. Uh, you've kind of even confounded me with this, but before they're going to willing, willing to embrace this uh, other point of view, uh, they want to study it further. And I completely support that learning process. I, I did not change from believing in, ter in eternal torment to believing that the lost just are annihilated and perish in the lake of fire. Uh, that change did not happen to me like that. The first time someone showed me uh, some proof for against it. I, my mind was changed over the period of a year or more with a lot of debate, a lot of argument among, with, with a friend who held the other position. But I was willing to hear him out and listen and consider his point of view. And finally, he won the argument and persuaded me. And uh, so that's that's good thinking, being willing to listen to the opposing point of view and actually consider it. Who knows? You might learn something. Uh, now, here's another example of more good thinking. This is from YouTuber Chris Johnson. OK, well, actually, uh, I, I seem to remember a prior comment to this, but I, I couldn't find it. So I think it was a comment that uh, um, was very short, that was um, like basically just saying I was wrong. Uh, not any uh, really a, a explanation as to why, but basically like, well, you're wrong. Uh, and, and But then the, I got this comment from Chris Johnson. Uh, okay, my bad. 
I didn't and don't understand what you're getting at. Nine hours of video is a lot. I'll try to watch some of it. And in the meantime, I've deleted my comments. Oh, that's why. That's why I can't find the original comment. The original comment was just basically a, a short comment, like, you're, you're wrong, the Bible disagrees with you. Uh, and I said, well, if you'll be willing to watch my entire series, and uh, then you'll be educated enough to at least understand and make a, an intelligent, informed decision. And this was uh, Chris Johnson's reply. Uh, taking on nine hours of video is a lot, uh, Chris says. But uh, Chris says, I'll try to watch some of it. Um, but can you tell me, in a nutshell, what you discovered does happen to those who die in unbelief? So Chris wants me to explain in a nutshell uh, what my, my view on what does happen to the, the, the lost. So I respond, um, I don't like to do, quote, in a nutshell, unquote, statements, but I will make an exception for you. Yes, there will be a bodily resurrection of the, quote, just and the unjust, unquote. That's the saved and the lost. The lost are raised to face the great white throne judgment. There they are found lacking the gift of eternal life. They rejected Jesus and the free gift, so they died the second death, body and soul, in the lake of fire. There they are consumed and perish. That is a nutshell, but it is not really fair to you and God to condense or reduce it in that way. So I'm happy to know that you will watch more of the videos so that you get a greater understanding of the love, mercy, and justice of our great Savior God, Jesus. So, uh, I don't remember if it was days or, or weeks passed, but some, some time passed and Chris makes another follow-up comment and says, uh, uh, that's okay, Brother Luke. I, I understand. Uh, I was out of line to ask. I've been watching your videos, and they real they are really a blessing to me. I've struggled with the idea of eternal torment from a God of love and mercy, but then I think I'm just questioning God, and God is God, and he has his reasons. And it's not my place to question his word, and if his word says eternal punishment, who am I to say? So your videos are really helping. I'm seeing the truth in scripture. The idea of a lost relative or friend who has passed being destroyed and no longer existing isn't easy, but it's easier than thinking of them burning forever. I just kept thinking, love is merciful. If God is love, he has to be merciful. Thank you again, and God bless you. Uh, so, um, this is similar to uh, my thought process as I was um, changing my views on this subject, uh, in that uh, uh, Chris says, uh, I'm going to accept what the Bible says, and uh, I'm not going to challenge what the, the Word of God you know, I, I believe the Bible is my source of truth. And if the Bible says God's going to torture people forever and ever and ever, uh, then I'll, I'll believe that. I did believe that for 25 years. I taught it, and I defended it. I probably defended it as well as most anybody you've ever known. I know all the defenses for it, and yet now I know that those defenses don't hold water. Uh, but... Uh, I, I would say that, uh, yeah, let, let's let's stick to agreeing that the Bible is true, and whatever it says, that's what I accept. Uh, even if I don't like it, I'm going to accept it. But does the Bible really teach eternal torment? It really does not, as I claimed in the first comment, that there's hundreds of proof texts against eternal torment. And there's only a few, a couple of verses that can be used to defend it. And, and there are good answers for those verses. Uh, but I do think that 
the belief that uh, God is going to torture people uh, and torment people forever and ever uh, if they don't uh, believe in Jesus for their salvation, then uh, uh, that is uh, the majority viewpoint uh, in the church today, at least in America. I don't know around the world. I haven't done any polls on that, but at least I think in America, most Christians believe in a total torment of the lost. Um, but uh, I, I'm not going to accept something just because it's a majority viewpoint. But on the other hand, I'm not going to leave the majority camp. I'm not going to leave the, uh, let's call it the orthodox position. I'm, uh, the, I'm not going to leave that viewpoint very just haphazardly, just so quickly as uh, uh, these uh, YouTubers have said, they, they, they don't want to just jump from one opinion to another that, like that. So they're going to take some time to study this. And as I said, it took me a long time. I don't change my mind on uh, theological positions uh, overnight. It's usually a long, long, studious process. Um, so my, uh, my answer to uh, Chris's comment there was, you and I know the true God of the Bible. We instinctively know that eternal torment does not fit with the character of God. I look forward to your thoughts as you continue studying this further. So I'm not asking anybody to watch the video and then immediately just change your mind on it. I'm asking you to watch the entire playlist and then go to the, uh, the YouTube channel Rethinking Hell and watch all of those videos too. And there's tons of resources uh, and I believe if you will spend the time, you will be persuaded. Um, now, then I get another comment from, uh, from Chris Johnson. Um, Brother Luke, thank you so much for your series on the state of the dead. I did as you asked and began watching the videos. After asking God to show me the truth in scripture, I was convinced by the time I got to the sixth video that the soul is not innately immortal and God does not send unbelievers to eternal torment. The truth is the truth and I seek the truth no matter what. That is paramount but I have to say it has lifted such a burden from my heart. Thanks again and keep doing your good work for the Lord. So, this is the result of good thinking. And that is, you come across a teaching uh, that is different than yours, uh, and, and instead of just having a knee-jerk reaction of arguing against it without even really understanding it, take the time to study it out carefully, and perhaps you'll be persuaded that you were wrong. Perhaps you'll be convinced that no, you were right and they're wrong, but at least now you understand their point of view. What is the harm of that? Uh, but uh, in this case, if you will be willing to take the time to study it completely, you'll see the, the, uh, the evidence, the proofs are all on the side of uh, that the lost will perish, they will be destroyed, they die the second death, they no longer exist, they will not be tortured forever and ever. So my final answer to Chris Johnson, to that last comment was, I am happy for you. It really is a relief to learn that our great Savior God, Jesus, is not a cruel, sadistic torturer of those who reject him. No, he mercifully lets them die the second death. If you don't object, I would like to make a follow-up video about your change of mind on this. Let me know if that is okay with you. I may not be able to do it right away because I need to get over some health problems that have slowed me down. Okay, so that's the... Um, 
kind of a summary of the, the uh, fact that I made this video against eternal torment. Uh, there, I got, I think, a lot of views on it and, and a lot of thumbs up, no thumbs down, a lot of supporting comments, uh, people who were in agreement uh, that already had agreed before I made this video. Not, my video didn't persuade them. They already held this position. But many of you probably don't know that a lot of people hold this position that I have. And, and it's just that they're not always talking about it. But uh, uh, so, and then you see that there's the people who disagree with me. Uh, there's two different ways you can approach this disagreement. You can just go like this and say, and not even listen to the video not even actually consider it, but just start arguing against it without even knowing all the facts and not even really addressing the actual point of the video. And that is that propitiation and eternal torment cannot coexist. You cannot have them both. You're going to have to choose. Either we don't have propitiation and Jesus did not pay for all of our sins on the cross. Uh, uh, or... Uh, and, and and eternal torment is true, or that Jesus did pay for all our sins of the cross on the cross, and that and that e eternal torment cannot be true if that's the case, because otherwise Jesus would have to be in hell right now and forever, being su suffering in our place, because if if Jesus took our punishment, he took our place, and 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 the. The result of us being lost is eternal torment, and Jesus paid the price instead of us, then he has to be suffering eternal torment. That's the point of the video in a nutshell. So you can't have both eternal torment and propitiation. And, and that's just one example of many that are arguments against the idea of eternal torment of the lost. All right, so... Um, I wanted to make this video for a while, as I said, I, I was tied up, and now I just had a little time to do it. So I, I look forward to your comments. If, if uh, you see me missing in action again, uh, then uh, uh, as soon as I'm available, I'm going to uh, get back to answering your, any further questions on this subject. So thank you for watching, and uh, I hope that you will be like the, the good thinking saints, not the bad thinking saints. The good thinker was willing to listen and study the other point of view. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.